will open the uh, Board of Commissioners work session here on October 21st to 14th at 9 o'clock in the Jackson Room here at the Jackson County Courthouse. I'm going to okay. talk about the Resource Management Plan Amendment for Table Rocks. Very good. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for having us uh, here today. Have a Thanks hand for out. being here. Um, my name is John Reddy. I'm the Associate District Manager for the Medford District Field, and I have with me uh, Jean Williams, who's our Acting Field Manager for the Butte Falls uh, Resource here. She's uh, taken my place, at least in the interim, until we um, do uh, fill that uh, position in the long term. And her day job is she's, she's our Planning and Environmental Coordinator. Um, so what I want to do is um, go through and just take a, a few minutes. I have a short um, sort of tabletop presentation, and then be happy to uh, answer any questions that the commissioners uh, may have. So with that, um, we'll go into the uh, first page. We have uh, overall what we are um, proposing to do is to establish um, a new administrative boundary, which on the map is the uh, red outlined uh, area um, on Highway 234 that goes down to the Rogue River um, and then north of uh, Modoc and Antioch. Uh, road. So that would establish a new area of critical environmental concern boundary that um, would uh, include um, the designation and the management direction only to the BLM administered um, public lands within that boundary. Um, so the proposed RMP amendment, it would amend our uh, resource management plan, would establish that administrative boundary. We would um, include the parcels that we have recently acquired in the uh, tan area to the uh, north and east at Upper Table Rock that we recently acquired here oh, about 18 months ago um, from the Nation Conservancy. Those would be designated as uh, ACC. We would remove a small uh, piece that's um, located across from the trail, uh, Table Rock Trailhead, um, that would be removed from ACC designation. And um, it would also um, position us with the establishment of that boundary to um, compete for land and water conservation funds nationally, that if other lands became available for acquisition that we could um, apply for those grant dollars and, and pursue, uh, pursue that. <clears throat> what it would not do, um, the, the plan amendment and proposed action would not apply um, to any private state, county, or other ownership at, uh, by law under the Federal Land Policy and Management Act under FLIPMA. Um, it can only um, apply to the BLM administered lands in that area. Um, it also wouldn't impose any other burdens, constraints, or restrictions or limits on any of the lands uh, within, within that boundary. Um, and again, why we're doing this, um, we, we need to do um, the administrative uh, boundary adjustment primarily to um, let us compete for those land and, and water conservation uh, dollars. And um, by doing so, you know, if any, any future lands were required, those would be um, available for public uh, access and use in recreational activities. Sure, John. Um, John, why is that area, the, the northeast area, not inside of the C A C E C where the most of the pillboxes are up there? Why did you leave that section out? Um, it, it will be included. Currently, um, it is not because we have to go through this process to designate it. But it would be included as as, the, as part of the A C E C. Same thing with them. This one. Right. Oh, the, the heavy lines. The current A C E C. Oh, that's, that's the right. current. Oh, yeah. I got you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the whole, so everything is BLM inside of the red line. Right. Okay, I'm with you now. Thank you. Um, on the back page, uh, just quickly on the timeline, we are in the initial phases of this. Um, we had a very good open house on October 16th. It was well attended, about 50 um, local residents and, and members of the public, and we had a really uh, robust conversation. They um, expressed a number of concerns about what this might mean, and, and um, as we went through that, that process, um, answered a lot of good, good, hard questions, and um, and as part of that, we're going to extend a batch gene to extend the public comment period another 30 days. Um, we're going to go out with another letter to the landowners with a revised um, boundary as part of um, one and 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 a range of alternatives that we'll we'll consider. So it'll be responsive to the, the feedback that we got from from the members of the public last uh, Thursday. Um, and then, you know, our timeline, uh, we don't um, necessarily have a hard end date. The uh, typical application process for land and water conservation funds, um, that those are typically due in around April. So if um, we were able to make a decision sometime before April, that would be the rough timeline for this year, April 2016, 15. 
Okay, with that, um, any, any questions? Well, we'll have some. Do you want to have to do it now or do you want to wait? Well, I, it's, uh, I think John can answer this one. Uh, okay, go ahead. The, the one I get, uh, the main question I get from people is if I live within this area, really it won't, and I have private property, this designation won't affect his private property. It won't. It can't. Okay, because there's some people that are concerned as she found out in your meeting the other day. They are. Yeah. Okay, that clarifies it. Thank you. When you say it can't, can they agree to be subjected as a private property? property owner to all of the restrictions if they choose to, so it can if they... They could um, voluntarily uh, participate in the cooperative management plan, um, but that doesn't establish any any restrictions of uses or, or types of, of activities on private land. It, it would, you know, they can pick and choose which aspects of that management plan they would want to participate in. they could. In. They, they could opt in, that's correct. Yeah. Can I ask another question? Sure. So, when you came and talked with the board in the coordination process prior to <laughs> getting to this point, right. uh, the board did express to you their concern about expanding restrictions. Right. And I noticed in the documentation you gave us it doesn't talk to what the current restrictions are versus what uh, where those will now be placed. I'm assuming they'll be placed over all BLM on land, the current restrictions, but you're also adding restrictions, if I remember correctly. So, I'm sorry, so, so can you talk about those so that we're being refreshed about what they are? Right. The temporary restrictions process, when we acquired um, the Nature Conservancy lands, which were in private ownership, uh, the allowable uses at that point in time were hiking and day use on the private lands. And so when they came into BLM administered public ownership, we, um, to make the types of uses consistent with the existing BLM ownership as well as the uh, Nature cons uh, Conservancy ownership, we had to go through a process of, of establishing what would be temporary restrictions out there. And so we, we did go through that process. Those are in place for now up to um, two years as we sort out um, the long term what those could be uh, in the future. So um, right now it, it maintains you know, a, con a continued um, uh, limitation on discharge of firearms and, and uh, uh, metal detecting, rock collecting to protect some of the artifacts that are that are currently out there. Um, you know, different uh, well motorized uh, types of vehicle uses. Well, thanks, John. And um, anyway, having dogs, uh, you know, confined just to the trailheads and, and vehicles, so that we don't have the conflicts we typically would have. So is it is it Beelan's intent to carry those? current restrictions that are temporary forward in this process as your proposal uh, once the, the boundaries amended to include the current restrictions. You, you're set, you, you said that you have time to decide what they're going to be, but what's your, you have a starting point, I'm assuming. Right, right now is the starting point. So back when those were uh, published in the Federal Register, I believe it was back in, help me Chris. Was it March when they were published in the Federal Register in March? Regardless of this boundary, mm -hmm. those would apply to the BLM right. administered lands right now. Well, as <coughs> it's already been stated, but we did have a concern about right. about additional restrictions. Right. And now, and I understand what you're saying here as far as so, uh, this will allow you money to, uh, to get uh, maybe some grant money uh, and continue to purchase private property around there and looking down the road is if you become successful at that depending then we're going to be looking at this boundary area here which is a huge part obviously a very iconic part of our valley right they're going to have some let me just say the substantial restrictions so you can you can you can define the stats as substantial any way one wants to but different restrictions okay and, and that's a concern of ours okay um, so let me be clear, that, um, it would not establish any new restrictions that don't already exist on the, the private lands. Okay. So, so that we would, don't already exist on the private lands? That's correct. Well, just, so, the, uh, just for clarification, all the private lands have different restrictions. There's, right. a, there's a, a patchwork or quilt of different ownership in there. Right. You're referring to just the Nature Conservancy private lands with those restrictions, correct? Well, and even when we're looking at our, at our phase two, what, um, you know, when what was um, termed the, the Neary property when it was on the market back in 2010-11, you know, that area has, has um, been of interest because it has been on, on the market and, and, it, and it would provide some unique um, recreational and public access opportunities and that currently um, is completely off limits to the public. Well, 
I think what Commissioner Skinner is talking about is, yes, while they're currently private, right. those restrictions don't apply. But once you acquire them, as so long as they're within the boundary, right. those restrictions will automatically apply, will they not? They only, if we go through the Federal Register process, and, and establish what those uses are. We would maintain, um, for consistent management purposes, what we have out there um, currently for the types of uses that, that um, are taking place right now in beyond lands. So would it be your intent that if you acquire additional privately, currently privately held property that you would apply these restrictions to those inventories as well within the boundary? So if they're required within the next two years, those, would, uh, those temporary restrictions would apply. I mean, we have to go through a, a, a long-term formal process of uh, providing supplemental rules, which is the permanent um, types of uses that are established. But if it was in the next two years, those would apply. Uh, and that was my question, John. In two years, you review this again to decide whether you're going to continue the restrictions now? Right. They will automatically expire. and then They will automatically to, expire. Right, okay. And we have to right, go through the long-term, what we call supplemental rules process. Okay. And what do you see those restrictions being in two years? Um, they could be somewhat similar, but um, different depending on location. So, you know, we've got um, right now the limitation on where dogs can be. We could probably look at areas that would be open to have, you know, dogs, uh, you know, other types of uses. I mean, where we could have um, uh, hunting opportunities depending on, um, you know, how that coordination went with. Uh, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and, and others. So, you know, again, I think we can have a better conversation about what those can be because we're talking about specific locations and how we can separate uses so we um, reduce the potential for conflicts. So you see, we're operating under under a couple of different tensions, if you will. Uh, on the, on one side, you have private property mm -hmm. that would be open to the public once they came to say that that was. And I'm talking. About, we also all know about uh, uh, the. Uh, um, the, well, I wasn't thinking the Neary property necessarily, but but that that uh, uh, Nature Conservancy properties, but the other private landholders in here, and again, like I say, it's an iconic area, and it would give access then right. uh, to the public. Right. That's the good side, okay. The, 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 I don't know if I won't necessarily call it the bad side necessarily, <laughs> but again, but the, but the other side of that same coin is is that obviously with with that access comes restrictions and and and, and as we and I know that sometimes it doesn't sound like a, that's a big deal and put the dog on the leash and etc. But you know you want to be out in the wild you want to let your, I don't have a dog so I'm not I'm, but I'm just saying I'm using that as an example uh, running or if you're used to shooting rabbits or whatever the case may be so uh, that you see that's why I say the tension there that on one side's a great deal it's going to open up some land from, for public access and use and enjoyment but on the other hand it certainly comes with conditions right and that, and that, that is true and but we feel like by going through a robust public process we can establish what those uses are and, and have a have a better discussion about you know what the expectations are of the public and, and be responsive to that as well would it be your intent to have the new plan in place prior to the expiration of the temporary rules Having the new plan in place? Yes, plan in place. I mean, you're going to provide uh, various options, I'm assuming, based on the input you've had. Right. And then you're going to adopt to move one forward. Are you required to go through a NEPA process for any of this? We, it falls we, we are. We are. It does have to, and that's what we're currently in right now. We have to do an environmental assessment with a range of alternatives. So, what's the timeline for completing this I guess is what I'm saying you know the, the temporary rules will expire two years but it doesn't matter if they expire if the new rules are in place mm -hmm. right so the new boundary would with, with not not the um, long-term <coughs> uses so supplemental rules that process hasn't even started yet so by March of 2015 um, I'd like to see this decision signed so that would mean that one year already of those temporary restrictions would have been in place with another year remaining, which we would then go through the process of looking at the supplemental rules. Yeah. And is a year a long enough time period for you to get through the supplemental rule making process? It's going to be close. It, it, it could very well be that these expire before that process is completed based on the way I've seen that, that work. 
So, uh, John, you're a, a property, private property owner within this area and such. Did you attend that meeting that uh, here? That, or the, no, that, that was the job. night that you were gone and we each had other meetings we had to go oh, to. I had a fair board meeting. We didn't have staff attend, though. We, oh, we were, yeah. we were <laughs> okay. meeting. Okay, well, well, I want to come back then. I want to get some input then. John, you, so you can report on that. But as a private property owner in the area, I'm, I'm kind of curious for your for your. Well, I'm not concerned about the restrictions. Well, I am concerned about the restrictions, as we talked about earlier. But uh, I was just thinking, as you were talking about it, my property adjoins that, and right now I let people ride horses on there, and I let the uh, the, the search and rescue dog team come up there. If if the federal government be and buys that from me, now those restrictions will be on there, which they're not on there now. So, to, to your point that you mentioned earlier, it'll be more restrictive. You know. I don't think the federal government can afford you, John. Well, <laughs> I was going to donate it. <laughs> uh, you we can afford that. Uh, John Vile, uh, can you kind of give us a uh, quick uh, briefing on, on uh, from the staff? On so the I, I, I think John probably summarized it pretty well. There was a lot of concerns amongst the private property owners, especially in the John Day Drive area. A lot of the people that live down there um, between John Day Drive and the river. A lot of concerns, not understanding what these restrictions, what this this boundary means, and and uh, perceptions or feelings that those restrictions would uh, apply to their private property. Um, if, this, if it in fact is exactly as John's explained it, those restrictions have, n have no, no impact on private property whatsoever. They can only apply to BLM per law. I don't think those people are impacted. But in all honesty, there's some trust issues. And there's some people down there that aren't sure that they believe that and they're concerned and they have um, some strong feelings. That I can't believe. Yeah. <laughs> they have some strong feelings that they should be excluded, that, that, that they shouldn't be included inside the boundary. Was there not also some discussion about is there an intent to actually make this a national monument area? Yeah, there's a fair amount of discussion about is, is this the next move to make this area um, the next uh, um, uh, cascade um, kind of a set aside and, and, and a taking there. Um, and uh, I mean, BLM assured us that that's not the case. Um, again, I think there's some, some trust issues there. I think the last thing that jumped out is a lot of people are concerned that if they're in this boundary, that this boundary has to be disclosed at the time of sale, and that therefore their property values would be reduced, and people would be afraid to purchase the property because they're inside of this boundary, and there was a lot of concerns expressed around that as well. And as I talked with John's staff, one thing that did jump out to me on that was th this is not a land use decision in any fashion. Nothing's recorded. There's no restrictions per you know development services that come along with this boundary. It's an administrative boundary on a map, and that's it. On the other hand, that can be that can be uh, it actually could raise property values. You know, people say, "Hey, I'm right up against BLM land. I don't ever have to worry about development behind me." I mean, so it could work either way. So, so, John, you said BLM assured us that that wasn't the case in terms of creating you know a designation. But can they really assure that? I mean, that's not something they can assure, right? Well, I mean, as I talked with, they may not be their intent. Right. They may not be in control of whether or not that happens. Right. Is what I'm getting at. But, I would agree. As I talked to John's staff, there was nothing to indicate that this was the local office's goal, but does that prevent somebody else from doing it? No. Yeah. You know, I just would want to make sure that if the public asks oh, that, yeah. we qualify. Yeah. BLM has indicated we that the you know, the president can pretty much. Okay. But John, the, the only thing, I, I guess I just asked John to clarify. John, you, t you noted you're going to leave the record over th open 30 more days, and you said that you might adjust the boundary. Right. Maybe discuss what your thoughts are. So, there again, were some strong feelings, um, especially from the folks in the John Day Estates area and, and other landowners, and, and we would um, look at the potential for having um, possibly a boundary that might be focused specifically around Lower Table Rock and a separate one around Upper Table Rock so that it um, leaves out, you know, the areas that are of most concern for folks and, and only includes the areas that um, folks are supported of. That so, excuse me, John, yes. so what areas are you talking about that might be in, in the, 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 the properties between the, rock, the two Table Rocks or down towards the river? Or? So what a possible um, second boundary configuration could look like, let's see, let's see if I can do this. It, it could potentially, John, include, John include something like that as one separate okay. piece, and then this boundary 
around. Okay, so that's kind of what I was guessing. Right. And if you did that, that would mean that all of the property between would no longer qualify for land that's water correct. conservation funds. That's correct. In, in areas like the John Day Estates, which is a subdivision today, if you, if you take that out, that's a loss for what, the, what you know, the, the, the properties that they would like to, or maybe would like to acquire at some point. I mean, frankly, the boundary that we put on this map is a boundary of convenience because it uses major roads and the river. That's, it's easy yeah. to see. Okay. Further questions? Yeah. So, did I just hear you right, Danny? It makes it so it's not eligible for LWCF funds? For the part that's not within the designated boundary. That's why they're creating a boundary so it qual they can qualify for land water conservation funds to acquire private property. So if they shrink the boundary, only within the boundary do the properties qualify, which means everything they cut out wouldn't qualify for these land and water conservation funds. Exactly. So that's But it could do, I'm sorry, but what they could do is like they did with uh, 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 Nature uh, Resource Conservancy. Nature, Nature, Conservancy. Nature Conservancy is they could acquire the property and then do that similar thing with BLM, which would put it in their ownership. It just wouldn't be within the boundaries, but they already said they would likely adopt a temporary rule to make restrictions. So even if they shrink the boundaries, they could still have a manner to acquire those properties that are outside of the land and water conservation fund piece um, initially. But may qualify for land and water conservation funds if they amend it and bring it in. Well, so you clarified exactly where I was going to set it up. Thank you. Um, I'd like to understand what the big picture is. I'd like to know where it's going to be in 10 or 20 years, what your boundary lines are going to look like. Because what I'm seeing here is a systematic small taking that seems to be growing and growing. And it's inconsistent with the uh, policy that I'm getting from Cynthia from the national side. Cynthia Hayes, the BLM uh, uh, liaison to the counties, which is telling us that the uh, LWCF funds are going to be starting. They're going to be the BLM is using those to maintain properties, not to acquire new properties, and then we're working in that direction. So I'm kind of wondering, what's the where are we going in the big picture with this? How much more private land do you intend to lock up? Um, because that has an impact on our our, our communities, as you well know. Because this is right in the middle of a, a residential, rural ranching I mean, And are, are, is it the intent of the BLM to start releasing other lands within its jurisdiction to compensate for this amount? Because I'm sure that you're going to have to uh, pay for the management of this, and it's going to go, it's no longer going to have special funding that's come out of your general obligation to be able to pay for the management, which is going to take away from timber receipts or something else somewhere else. So how, how is that going to balance out? So a couple things. With our um, Table Rocks Management Plan, that does describe our long-range plan um, for management of BLM and ministry lands in the area as well as the Nature Conservancy. This um, proposed boundary, as you see it right now, um, that, again, was the logical management area boundary that we established. It's not going to get bigger than that. And in fact, what I've said is that, um, based on the public input, those, um, the boundary will all actually get smaller. Um, it will not affect private lands in any way, shape, or form within those boundaries other than to allow us to compete for funds nationally, which we may or may not be successful. Um, depending on how those priorities uh, shake out, it's a very competitive process. Um, but from my standpoint, because of the iconic nature of, of this area and um, you know the current uses in, in that area, um, to expand public access and recreational opportunities is a real, I believe it's an asset for Jackson County and Southern Oregon um, is a real draw economically um, for people to be able to use in areas such as that. We would make trade-off decisions um, in terms of where we would allocate uh, our funding, but what we found is that um, we've developed strong partnerships. Our Mountain of the Road bike trail is a good example where we um, received outside grant funding sources. We have volunteers constructing that trail with very little to no uh, public funds because folks um, enjoy that type of use and, and um, they take ownership in that. So I would see something um, similar being a possibility uh, here as well. We would want to keep that overhead as low as possible and the cost of taxpayers as low as possible. And what is the... Uh list of critical concerns for the area that the BLM's established. Um, you're identifying this as a critical concern area. What is, what's critical in this area? 
Is that, is that list identified? Is it on public record with the county? Or I mean, I, I haven't seen anything given to us during these conversations on what is actually the critical concern that these regulations have to be put in place for. So for for AC season, and I can make sure and get you the uh, the information on on the nomination forms and how that uh, was put together, but. Um, they essentially have to have relevant and important values, okay? So like wildlife habitat, I mean, we do have uh, the vernal pools in there. I mean, those are the kinds of things. Um, and the geologic features themselves um, rise to the level of, of being relevant and important. But then the, the third aspect of this is when we have an area that may need um, special management. That's how an ACC gets designated. So we have, we have a list of unique values. Um, I wouldn't call them, um, those aren't concerns, they are, they are values that we're, that we're managing out there. Um, it's, the, it's the terminology that we've had since 1986 uh, in terms of the management direction for ACEC. That's the, that's the language that, that we live with. So. And I think it, it's a little bit difficult for him to tell us what's going to happen in 20 years. It'd be like asking the board here what we're going to do in 20 years. So. The, the other thing, too, with regard to private or public ownership is you know, even, for example, the portion that the Nature Conservancy uh, acquired, is it's available for private sale. I mean, mm -hmm. no one wanted to compete and buy it, so mm -hmm. it was a private person, a private party that sold it, but they could have sold it to anyone. No one else wanted to step up and buy it. No one within this boundary is uh, forced to sell their property. Mm -hmm. There's not any domain that's occurred within any of the area, so it still is a you know, private party's right whether or not they want to sell their property and who they want to sell it to, per se, and there's competition for it. So, I mean, I just point that out because sometimes people think that we're, the government is just taking this property away from them, and, but they're not. No, no one believes it is taking. It's just that the government has the unlimited funds to buy <coughs> as much as they want. Yeah. And the, the private sector could never compete with that. Limited, but, uh, I don't know. You further, further. further, Congress is spending the day. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, any other questions for John and, and uh, Jane? Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for coming. We appreciate it.